So we haven't done a video on powder production in quite some time, and simply because there hasn't been anything new to report, right up until about two weeks ago. Now, somebody a while ago left me a comment on one of my videos saying that they were making powder and they noticed that they were getting rubber dust out of their rubber mill jar, the same one I use. And after I heard that, I thought, you know, we probably should do everything we can to make sure we're not getting any kind of contaminant. And so what we decided to do was make a new ball mill jar and get rid of the lead media. Now, this is probably something I should have thought of sooner because when I cast lead balls, they have a sprue on them. And I will throw them in one of my tumblers and roll them for a couple hours to kind of smooth that sprue off of there. And after I pour them out, there's a bunch of lead dust in there. And it didn't really occur to me that that was getting into the powder. So we made a new ball mill jar, which I'll show you. So what we've done is we've made a new ball mill jar. And what this is, is schedule 24 inch PVC with an end cap and a reducer down to three inch. And in here we have glued four slats, which is also just four inch PVC, to the side that work as lift blocks. Also, we've gotten rid of our lead media and gone with ceramic. We have half inch and three quarter inch ceramic balls. And if you are gonna do this, I would recommend not getting a taper like this, I would get a flush bushing and then use a section of three inch because we have to prop it up here with the uh, two by four because if you lay it flat, you'll get a bunch of powder that accumulates here on the end. But I think the most important thing is upping this diameter here on the propeller shaft. We've about doubled it. So before it was going 40 RPM ish. Now it goes 80. And the cool thing about this is we can do a 200 gram batch in about four hours when before it took about eight. So we don't usually uh, cap this off here or anything. We just put the cover on, but this is how fast it goes. So it's turning twice as fast and it mills it about twice as fast. So this accomplishes a couple of things. You don't have much of a chance of getting a contaminant in there like the rubber dust and the lead media, even though I suppose you still could get some PVC in there. And it turns much faster. And all we did is we took some duct tape and wrapped that thing a few times until we mic'd it. And even though it's squishy, so mic and it's kind of a, a little goofy is we doubled the size of that shaft, making it effectively turn twice as fast. So we can turn, we can mill a batch, a 200 gram batch in four hours when before it would take eight or even longer. <clears throat> so all of that is a game changer. And so we went with the standard ratio that we've been using for quite some time of 77, 13, 10. And here's how it went. Okay, so 50 grains of 3F alder buckthorn in the new mill and the ceramic media. Fifteen thirty-five. Whoa, that's good. Uh, should be seventeens. Okay, shot number two. Fifteen forty-five. One more. Yeah. All right. Shot number three. Fifteen sixty-three. That's real That's good. Super consistent. That's very consistent. So now, let's see how dirty it is. Times two. Yeah, that extra ten grains make a big difference, huh? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Shit. That's after three this rounds. Three shots, yeah. Wow, dude. That's like. Uh, I think we got something. Going. So this is after three Great. shots. Is that going? Yeah. Oh, no, 
So these are the homemade patches and these are GoX. And I could tell just by running the first patch down it after three shots, this stuff is a lot cleaner and leaves a lot less fouling. Right off the bat, it's a little disappointing because the velocities are about 200 feet per second lower than what they would be normally. So that was the first thing we noticed. But when I was swabbing it, I noticed right off the bat, it was much, much cleaner than GoX. I did do these a little different than I usually do. Everything else is the same, same rifle, same patch, same ball, 50 grains, all of that stuff is the same. I'm priming with the same charge powder, all that stuff is the same, but I did this different. Typically, I would shoot one shot, swab the barrel, take a picture of the patch, you know, all of that. I didn't do that this time. What I did is I shot three shots and then I would swab the barrel. Now, the reason why I do that is that's typically how I shoot that rifle. And I usually use 3F Swiss and that's how I shoot it. And it always takes one cleaning patch with 3F Swiss. That's all it takes. And in these pictures here, the two patches on the right were my powder. The three patches on the left were GoX. I didn't get any footage of shooting three shots worth of GoX, but it, it averaged 1650 just like it always does. So that's how I typically shoot this rifle. So the, again, the patches on the right, I used two cleaning patches for my powder. And I could I, did, I could have got away with just one if I had just flipped my other patch around, where three shots took three cleaning patches for the GoX on the left. Now, that's how I shot all of these other ones here. So, <clears throat> we decided to kind of go back to the drawing board. We thought maybe we were over-oxidizing it. And so, what we did was we made a fresh batch at the standard ratio of 75, 15, 10. And here it is. Okay, so what is this stuff? This is 75, 15, 10? Yes. All the buckthorn are... with the new tumbler with the new mill and the new tumbler correct the, the mill is the tumbler the new mill and the new media correct first shot it's like 15 18. all right shot number two All right, shot number three. Hi. Right. 1545. That's a little more like it. Yeah, well, not that GoX is super clean, but that's after three shots. I don't see. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. Not bad at all. Definitely not Swiss clean, but certainly cleaner than GoX. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, that actually was a little bit slower. Not by a lot, but by a little bit. And pretty much just as clean as the 771310 batch, and certainly more clean than GoX. Now, again, it's a little disappointing because the velocities are 200 feet per second less on average. But what we were able to do with this and what it shows is we were able to overcome an obstacle that so far we have failed at in the last however many years we've been doing this. Everything I have tried has not done much of anything to improve the cleanliness of my black powder. It's always only lowered the velocity and by a ways, like 1500 feet per second is pretty good because we've tried doing some other goofy things and it would be in like the 12s and the 1300s. So this really isn't as bad as other things that I've tried, trust me. <clears throat> but it's really a big step in the right direction. So then just for sport, we upped it 20 more grains. So it's a total of 70 grains just to see if the velocities would get back up there where they should be. And here, here it is. All right, 70 grains. We're up 20. Seventeen fifty six. Seventeen fifty six. There you go. Okay, shot number two, seventy grains. Eighteen twenty three. Yeah. Yeah, that's a 
All right, shot number three, 70 grains. Sign. Man, if we could only pick up, <laughs> if we could we only, only pick up 200 feet per second with 50 grains. Second, yeah, that is that is definitely cleaner than GoX after three shots at 70 grains. So at 70 grains, it's right in the mid 1700s, low 18s, which is right where it would be usually at 50 grains. Now, I think what we're dealing with is just contaminated charcoal because the sulfur is the same, the potassium nitrate's the same. I can't imagine we're picking up some other kind of contaminant from PVC. I mean, I suppose it's possible, but we'll see. So what we're going to do now is we'll make a fresh batch of charcoal with some alder buckthorn that I've had, uh, I think it was cut in December. So it's plenty seasoned. We're going to make charcoal in a controlled environment where we can control the temperature and see what the temperature is. From everything I've read, and I've heard this from a lot of people, you don't want to get your charcoal, well, you don't want to get your wood and your thing over 600 degrees. You want it a little under that, and you want it to happen as fast as possible, but at that temperature, not going over 600 Fahrenheit. So we're going to give that a try and hopefully that will get our velocities and our power level back up and maybe even make it a little bit more cleaner. So we'll see how that goes, but don't be discouraged. I'm trying not to be. It's actually a big step in the right direction. So I think that's about it. So as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video.